Welcome to Engineering Funda family. This video is a part of Microprocessor 8086 video lecture series and in this video I will be going to explain you flag resistor of Microprocessor 8086. My dear students with Microprocessor 8086 we are having 16 bits of flag resistor and with 8085 we have seen we were been having 8 bits of flag resistor. So all those flags that is also there with 8086 Additionally, there are few more flags that is there. Those are control flags. So you should see this video till last so that you can understand how exactly all these flags are there. So let me explain you all these flags step by step. So my dear students, as I have told you with flag resistor of 8086, we have total 16 bits of flag, right? Let us see what is happening from D0. So with D0, we have carry flag. So obviously this will indicate status of carry. So during execution of instruction, if carry is happening, this flag will get set to 1, right? So here carry flag shows status of carry during operation. Next is don't care with D1 and then with D2 we have parity flag. So that gives you idea about even and odd parity. Parity is been calculated based on number of ones in result. For example, when you perform addition, subtraction or any logical operation, in that as if number of ones are even, then this flag that will get set to one, else it will be zero. Then D3 is don't care. After that D4 is having auxiliary carry. My dear students, this auxiliary carry status flag that is applicable in eight bits of instruction only, and that gives you idea about nibble to nibble carry. So whenever carry is happening from lower nibble to higher nibble, this bit will get set to 1. My dear students, you should know what is nibble. This 8 bits is having 2 nibbles. Nibble is having size of 4 bits. So lower nibble to higher nibble carry is auxiliary carry, right? Now D5 is don't care and D6 is having zero flags. So during operation, if result is zero, then you can say that this flag that should get set to one. And if result is not zero, it will be zero. For example, if you decrement some resistor and if it is not zero, this flag will be zero. But after decrement, if that resistor is having zero status, in that case, zero flag will get set to one. And this D7 that shows you sign flag and that is what we use it with signed operation only that gives you idea about MSB of that data and if MSB of that data is 1 in that case you can say data is negative number and if MSB of that data is 0 then you can say data is positive number that we use it in signed operation only. And my dear students, if you have observed flag resistor of 8085, so that is this only, right? So Intel have upgraded its flag resistor. They have kept whatever flag that was there with 8085 as it is. Now, additionally, they have added this another eight bits. So in that, you see with D8, there is trap flag. And this trap flag that explains you one by one instruction execution, right? So you can say if it is one, then you can perform single step execution. But if it is zero, then complete program will get executed, right? Then this D9, that is the regarding interrupt flag. So if interrupt is enabled, then you will have this flag as one. If it is disabled, it will be zero, right? And this D10, that explains you direction flag. So here auto decrement and auto increment that we can identify with string operation. You might have seen SI and DI, those pointers are there with 8086 and those pointers that will be there in auto decrement or auto increment mode based on this DF flag. If it is one, it will decrement automatically by one. If it is zero, it will be there in incremented mode. And these three flags are control flag. My dear students, these are controlled flag, right? And these flags were not there with 8085. 
and now when we talk about next flag that is overflow flag that is there with 8086 and that explains you during operation as if overflow is happening in that case this flag will get set to 1 otherwise it will be 0. My dear students you should know some basics here when you restart this 8086 at that time status and control flags that will be 0 initially right and as if you want to change the control then you should be using this directional flag interrupt flag and trap flag for example if you want to see execution of instructions one by one the reason is sometimes you may not be getting like how error are coming or you may have some logical issues with program so at that time you will be checking that execution as per one by one instruction right so that you can have it by having trap flag is equals to one and when we talk about IF flag, so that is regarding interrupt control, right? My dear students, if interrupt flag that is that is equals to 1, it says that interrupt is enabled right now, right? And in interrupt service routine, this flag plays very essential role. You will have to execute EI instruction during interrupt, right? As if you don't perform EI instruction execution, then interrupt will be disabled and microprocessor cannot take interrupts, those are pending. So here, this interrupt flag that is very essential, that is also referred as control flag and this directional flag that is there regarding string instruction execution. For example, whenever you write any string, here 8086 supports all the ASCII data right so that we will be writing in strings and here what we can do is we can execute all those data which are there in string one by one by storing that at some particular location but when you want to execute that from lower data to higher data at that time you will have to increment that pointer which is there with this 8086 so at that time it should be there in auto increment mode but when you want to decrement that pointer, right, means you want to start from last data and you want to go it to towards first data. In that case, you should decrement pointer. So at that time, you should be having this DF flag that is equals to 1, which will be there in decrement mode. So to understand how access should be done, we should be understanding how this DF flag that should get set to 1 and by default it will be 0. Right. So this is how my dear students complete flag register that is there with 8086. Still if you have any confusion in future videos you will be observing there are many programs. So definitely those programs explanation will gives you more clarity regarding this flag register which I have explained you right now. I hope it is clear to you. Still if any confusion is there just post that in comment box I will be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.